I love that music. See, Jonesy's crafty. I don't know what at what stage Jonesy. Like last week, I was arsing about, and of course, he puts it on the podcast. So you need to watch that. We shape behind the phone. Jonesy's all right. Um, right, okay. That's is that the music finished? Is it right? Okay, welcome back to the Muckamore uh, podcast. Um, we're here with member and um, player Graham Ormiston, uh, first team captain Neil Gill, and we're going to go over a few things about Graham and Giller and the club and all that kind of stuff. But a few uh, thank yous to start off with, as usual. Um, uh, M&M Plastics, Mark at M&M Plastics is kindly to involved to get with a bit of sponsorship with this this year, which is really good. So he does all your um, double glazing and all that kind of stuff. In fact, I'm going to ring him because I burnt one of my windowsills indoors. That's right. You saw it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. At Christmas, um, knocked a candle over and almost set the house on fire, but that's the way it goes. Um, so thanks to him. And also, um, this will be good for you, Giller, in years to come, Stairlift Solutions. So, yeah. you know. A couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> your arm and your back and your legs go, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. get up there. Um, and thanks to them, um, they're going to help with a bit of sponsorship and a, a advertising board for the ground this year. So um, there'll be a few guys down our club that might need one of those in years to come. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then the Forum Island, they're a design company. They're taking a the board. So thanks to those guys there. They're in Belfast, aren't they? Yeah. I think they do design of your brands and stuff like that. They're yeah. sort of above our heads, really. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, check them out on their their website if you if you need any further details. I know. Yeah, just uh, rather than <coughs> me get, well, us get it wrong and decide what they do and what they don't mm-hmm. do. Um, yeah, check their website out. So, how, boys, how is it? How's Good it going? Dave, yep, had my first net there, outdoor net. Uh, got the ball machine out. I mm-hmm. uh, had a few balls. It was good. Yeah. Who was, who, who was doing that with you? Me and Jacko, Jimmy Jackson. Right. Okay. We're down, so uh, yeah, it was good. It was good to get back outside. The weather was lovely for a change, so yeah, it was good. Yeah, it doesn't give it great this week now. More rain, yeah, most days it's to rain again, so right. the pits could really do a good dry week. Mm-hmm. Um, the square, like Leah's done a wee bit of rolling on it today again. It's um, good to soft, soft in places, as the man says, right? So I could do a good dry, I'm sure every ground's the same, like. Our outfield's never really the issue, apart from down where it goes down at the score hut and the yeah. slope. But yeah, just look, every groundsman will be praying for a wee bit of dry weather, a bit well, of heat as well. Well, in desperation, I was looking at the, the long range weather forecast, and they say that April's going to be warmer than average and a little less rain. But oh, you know, that's never going to be right. Oh, no, so no. it's going to probably push down and uh, ah, be freezing cold. So, yeah. uh, you know, so we're, we're, you know, we're getting ready. We're getting there, aren't we, boys? Uh, it's, Mm-hmm. What is it? Three weeks to three weeks today that we play our first friendly match, fourteenth right. of April against uh Limbo. Um right. and then we're playing the twentieth against Woodfield at home and the mm-hmm. seconds are away to Lauren firsts. Yeah, so the seconds have got some uh Yeah, and then they've penciled in the Sunday at home to Climble's seconds as well, the twenty first. Right. So Well that's good. Yeah, no, there's loads of loads of good you know, pre season matches, good competitive matches coming up. I know Jonesy's the first He's the first captain in the club to to get playing the thirteenth. Um, Who are you playing, Jonesy? Makara on the thirteenth. Oh yeah, Benji, the return of uh, the Benji Cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So return of the Cathcart. And then they're playing. The user playing on the Monday night, aren't you? Fifteenth against the combined. Uh, I think it's Bluebells in that combined. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's so. like an inter club match. Yeah. Uh, I think Very there was good. something like that last year as well. The third and fourth, I think. But it's fair to say that indoor training's now. Finished. That's it, finitoed for us. I know yeah. the Bluebells are... No, no, they done they done as well? I think the the uh, Parkall College is closed for over ah, Easter. Right. So right. we're going to go back on the Wednesday, which is the 10th, I think. So, um, And the good thing about the Bluebells this year, they've got two new coaches. They've got um, Kurt, Kurt Moorhead and mm-hmm. Sats. Mm-hmm. Satish uh, Surish are, are going to be their coaches mm-hmm. this year. Very good. So I know they're excited about that. Um, and I know... The, the boys are excited to get stuck in doing a bit of coaching with them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and then our youth starts on the 8th, which is the Monday of the 8th, mm-hmm. I think. And hopefully, Graham, you'll be getting involved with them a bit more. As, uh... Absolutely. I've been there for a couple of the indoor sessions on the Sunday. It's been absolutely first class working with those young fellas, basically just giving Cliff a hand. But yeah. Uh-huh. No, it's been it's been great fun and look <coughs> forward to getting involved more this season, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, brilliant. You know, we can always do with the help, you know, so. Yeah. Um, 
he, he never seemed to have enough coaches with the you know we probably end up with maybe a hundred mm -hmm. uh kids maybe 40 or 50 under 11s i know there's enough for two or three teams under 11s mm -hmm. so uh there's never enough of uh the coaches to to look after them all and all the rest of it so you know yeah. we're all set for the season ahead that's it dave just yeah. a waiting game now isn't it mm -hmm. this is the bit where it drags now the, i know the final just, stretch. just it's tick top, oh, tick you think january's bad but yeah honestly this yeah. last three four weeks is tough yeah, There's I know. No point more than about it. No, it'll be there, and then it'll be over before you know it. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be sitting here, and it'll be winter again. So I know. don't wish it too quickly. No, I know. Um, well, listen, well, welcome, Graham. Um, now, a bit of background on Graham is, he's, uh, as you can probably tell, he's from Scotland, <laughs> and um, he joined our club. How long ago? Two. It'd have been tail end of twenty twenty two, I think, Dave. Yeah. yeah, came along and played a couple of games for the fives and sixes. Yeah, maybe didn't get an awful lot of runs, but no, it was good. Good to come and join the club. Was yeah. immediately welcome, well looked after. Yeah. Um, no, so it's been great. Yeah. Oh, brilliant! And now you're sort of like a mainstay of the twos there, opening bat. A couple of run outs for the first last year as well, I think maybe. And I don't uh, know. Just played the one game. Oh, that's right. Maybe okay. a catch or something. I don't yeah, know. But I, mm. no, it was good. So and, uh, blocking away for the oh, seconds, no, you, you know what it's like. That. I know what that's like, mate. Don't worry about that. The um, and then your, your club back in Scotland was uh, Gala. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. So just a wee club based in the Scottish Borders, very similar to Muckamore in many ways. Just community based club. Yeah. Juniors are important. You know. Oh, that's there a is beautiful there. ground, isn't it? Like lovely ground. Really, really nice. But how many teams do they have there? So we'd have three adult teams. Right. So two that would play on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then a sort of friendly team to play away on the Sunday as well. Mm -hmm. they, must, I, I, they must have a good groundsman, huh? But I always think that's what we... we the grumpy old sods. Uh, uh. <laughs> but don't you think, if you played like I used to back in England for Herringate, um, that, that Sunday cricket, friendly cricket was was a good sort of like thing to have, you know. So, um, And I kind of, when I played here for, for Muckamore from 2004, I kind of missed that sort of like Saturday was your league game and Sunday was a... A, fr a friendly game of cricket you know it's it's, it's times cricket rather than overs yeah. i don't know if you did the same there I kind of miss that it's sort of like more of a F few pints for the boys yeah, on a saturday I, night I, and then turn up you know 12 yeah. o'clock on the sunday that's it 30 overs a couple mm -hmm. of more beers yeah uh, uh, couldn't beat it yeah, yeah. so you kind of sort of missed that a bit when i when i moved here and played cricket here mm -hmm. sort of like that more relaxed sort of still competitive but not not as uh not a sort of you know the league structure and all that kind of stuff and mm. i'm sure there's a reason for it i mean there's so many games played here isn't yeah there? that's the problem yeah i yeah. think it's uh it's get a lot of guys struggle as well to yeah. commit the one yes full day yeah let alone without, so. uh, i think mm. sunday is used for doing your chores and your mm -hmm. your family day really isn't yeah. it yeah 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 there <laughs> is that tough. too so it was their youth section at uh, gala as well was there or just yeah all the way through much in the same way as we have at Macamore. you've got your sort of all stars, I think they call it, for under tens, whatever yeah. that is, mm -hmm. right the way through to under thirteens, under fifteens. Mm -hmm. So, all go there as well. And what league was it they played in? So the first team at Gala played in what was called the East Championship. So mm -hmm. they were lucky enough to win that on a couple of occasions over the last couple of years, just missing out on promotion to to the big leagues. Right. But I suppose no, they're doing really well, mostly local lads. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you still stay in touch with them and all the rest of it? Yeah, yeah. like, you know what it's like when we play and the, yeah. oh, yeah. all these cameras, it's so easy to, to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sure it's good for them, Graham, as well. Your parents and all being able to sit and watch at home, you know, when, I, when you're playing for the seconds, opening the baton and stuff, they're able to sit and, and watch the, the old Muckamore <laughs> CCTV. Yeah, absolutely. They Class. loved it. And of course, they came across in person a couple of times yeah. last year, had a few beers. And again, they were delighted with the welcome that they yeah. received. And yeah. I think looking forward to coming over for a few games Good. this Brilliant. year as well. Brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, the old man was a bit of crack, isn't he? Sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a character. Yeah, just yeah. Uh -huh. just loves his cricket. Yeah. Like, as do all my family, mm -hmm. my wee sister as well, my mum. But. Yeah, no, he's just cricket through and through. Did he, he, did he play, did he, back in the day? Yeah, he was. Um, he played for Gala all his days. Right. Um, got a few caps for Scotland B. Mm. Oh, pretty And good. Scotland under 23. So, yeah. uh, he's decent. We left arm spinner. Oh, so he um, left arm, is he? All here. Tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> oh, you can't beat them. 
Yeah. Uh, he's a he's a groundsman at Gala. That's oh, what right, I was saying okay. there. They must have a good groundsman. The groundsman oh, right. immaculate. No, they do a good job. Those lads mm -hmm. over there. I am sure they are the same. You know, same type of rainfall and weather as we get. You know, so it's it's you're battling against the elements all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you know quite a few of the teams that that are in sort of grounds. Ah, yeah, just obviously playing against Scotland growing up. You know, you get to know, and then being over there playing as well, yeah. playing a very few grounds and that. Um, right. Obviously, if your big Edinburgh teams and stuff would be the big boys. Um, mm -hmm. What's so names, aren't they? Carlton, Carlton Grange. Yeah. Grange. The Grange is obviously, the. I think it's the, the top, mm. isn't it? Would they be the top team? Yeah, players? they'd always have a few Scotland players playing mm -hmm. from the, those boys. Mm -hmm. Played at a played at a, a wee place. Was, the, no, the wee cobblestones, around yeah. the, like walls around the uh, Fruky. Mm -hmm. Just outside Dundee. You ever heard of Fricky? Niggly place to play cricket. Uh, Niggly. <laughs> Horrible played, to play against. I played in Ireland under 15 or 17, I think it was. And then we played at, I remember I remember one we played, uh, it was an Ireland under 23 game, mm -hmm. under 23 championships at uh, Fergalsey near Glasgow. Right. And it was a week after the, do you remember the car was driven through Glasgow airport? The oh, bomb in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy that had done that, house was sat right at the cricket club so it was all cordoned off with <laughs> forensics and stuff that he was a doctor actually oh, so uh, i remember that day paul sterling was 16 got 123 not out against uh against scotland broke the window of the sean we are at now oh yeah uh, he He's was sharp man yeah. he was sharp a sri lankan boy but he obviously scotland sharp opening bowler uh suspect action i have to say but he Ooh, was sharp. I'm saying and, nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he knows. And Paul Sterling, 16 years of age, just rocked back, banged him. Flat six, hook shot into the, and all you heard was smash. Big guy. Uh, Phil Simmons was the coach, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he was but, West Indian mm -hmm. fellow, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, no, I've played a brave few of them and played against a load of the guys for years. You know, you grew up playing against these yeah, guys yeah. from 13 yeah. right up, you know. Mm -hmm. Played at uh, Murchison Castle School in Edinburgh. Big massive boarding school. We all stayed there. I could tell you a few stories about that. A couple of days, we all stayed in the same dorms. Mm -hmm. um, is this the sunglasses story? No. Oh, Let's okay. jump in to tell you. No, no. Is it controversial? Uh, no, it's, no, it's all right. It's all right. Go on in. It's well. Me and the Scottish boys got into a bit of a fight. Aye. Wouldn't be like you. Do you know that. why though? No, I, was, I, had, I had every right. So there was one games room. Yeah. For the three teams. So yeah. Wade went down, brilliant, we'll have a few games of pool. They've been in before, so took all the pool balls up to their dormitory. So right. he says, the hell with this. I ain't gone up. So he says, anyone with me? No one came up with me. I think there was one wee lad from Dublin, Tim somebody. He ended up playing hockey for Ireland. He came up, right? Tim wouldn't be uh, the hardest of men. <laughs> 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 so anyway, he goes, right, where's, my, where's, where's the pool balls? We don't fucking have them, you Irish. <laughs> no, right, okay. So anyway, I, I goes, you fucking do have him. And one of the guys, uh, Ravery Rudry, he called him. He ended up, I think he, he might have got a few caps for Scotland, but uh, me and him got into a bit of a tussle and ended up, there was about four or five of them on me. All right. So I went back down to the games room with the pool balls. So you got them in the end then? Yeah, but, you know, I was black and, black and blue, like. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll here. I could tell you many a story, but I the, the cricket over there it was always sort of between us and Scotland, you know, mm -hmm. in the tournament. There was obviously Holland and Denmark, and mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, it was, you know, between the two of us who who won the championship. You know, very good. So okay, That's it's cool. very similar to back. It's very similar to here because of the, the same type of weather, same type of pitches. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, Scotland's obviously you know they've come on leaps and bounds over the year the way Ireland have as well. Mm -hmm. So. They're doing plenty of the right things, you know. They're getting Seems like all the smaller and countries sort of mm -hmm. leaps and bounds now, aren't they? Getting, uh, it's becoming they're getting more back and you see yeah, there's I, more matches. You know, years ago Ireland played flipping, I don't know, five, six matches a year. Mm. It's just mental now, you know what I mean? Mm. If you're growing up now, I'm sure a lot of MRS legends of years gone by are going, flip if I was playing now out of 100 plus caps, do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. And a lot more dough in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? I the know. money it's been. Mm. So... You Very go. good. You'll save all those stories for your autobiography, mate. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. They called us the graveyard team for a reason. Like. Mm. Ended up no coaches wanted to go away with us. <laughs> but we'll tell you what. We worked with, with some cracking teams over the years, but mm. we'll, we worked hard and we enjoyed ourselves. We yeah, yeah. probably went over the line too much, but it's part of growing up. Mm -hmm. I probably didn't mature. It was 15, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Took it seriously. Uh, <laughs> Idiot. Uh, that's all fun and games, boys. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we'll, go, we'll move on to so back to you, Graham. So you've got a sort of like some people might not know. I a lot of us down the club do, but sort of like the wider cricket and community. You, you, your background in rugby is yeah. big, isn't it? Do you, do you want to sort of tell us a bit more about the, what you do now and, uh, you know? If you... Yeah, absolutely. So currently I work for Ulster Rugby. Yeah. So I work as a rugby support officer. So, mm-hmm. you know, helping clubs, helping schools, yeah. you know, with the administration of their clubs, mm-hmm. job that I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Um, separately to that, I do a wee bit of refereeing as well. Mm-hmm. So I started that back in Scotland, you know, just refing in the club game and then moved over here and yeah. now do a wee bit of refing for the RFU as well. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, love it. So you, it gets you about, I mean, you've got about the place doing your refereeing as well, sort of mostly all, all over Europe and yeah, stuff. Yeah, certainly you? never would have as a player, Dave. Yeah, I, I. Um, <laughs> But no, yeah, got to travel around a wee bit, you know, yeah. the odd trip to the south of France and places like that so i was saying to you the other day about going to istanbul and you said i'd stop over on the way to georgia and stuff like that as well we, we had some journeys to georgia dave so yeah we had a couple of games over there um i think one of the times we ended up coming back via istanbul mm-hmm. via belarus oh, <laughs> amsterdam Jesus. warsaw took us about 27 hours on the way back it was just horrendous yes. all for 80 minutes of rugby uh, brutal <laughs> just cheap flights <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that was well, great i mean you, and you've also been involved with a few six nations uh yeah matches. just on the sideline as a sort yeah. of fifth official right so you know looking after the sin bins the paperwork mm-hmm. that sort of thing so no unbelievable experience you know sixty-seven thousand mm-hmm. people in murrayfield yeah standing there for the anthems Brilliant. Pretty cool. Against the yeah. old enemy too. Yeah. Yeah. Egnum. I forgot. Yeah. You two stop it now. What? We're just always about having to go to England all the time, aren't you? I'm just, just saying that. I'm stating just, facts. Why is it always the old enemy? Well, Every that, time you right, see it. So on, Scotland and England yeah, best know, buddies are. Whenever you watch anything on the TV and England's playing, they always say, no matter who they're playing, it's the bleeding old enemy. We can't have all They're those. They're not well liked, Dave. That's just <laughs> that's just call us be the speed. I don't know. We've got about a hundred old enemies. <laughs> Any wonder? Oh, no. <laughs> um, so he you, said it to you. You, well, told me, you told me a bit about the history yeah, and stuff. Know, we had we had many a long chats over in uh, yes. Istanbul, and David yeah. enlightened me. <laughs> and uh, uh, some of the things the English have done over the years, you know. Oh, some, yeah. I know. <laughs> but we'll not get into that. No, we won't get into that, mate. We'll end up having another fight. I know. So, uh, so, so, the, are you still refereeing now a bit, or is that sort of currently injured? Dave yeah, did my calf at the end of January there, so mm-hmm. um, but no, hope to pick it up again next year. Hopefully, be fit for the cricket season, mm-hmm. and then pick the whistle up again in August. Hopefully, oh, brilliant. And then you were, I saw you at Randallstown, obviously the club that I follow down the road here for the rugby uh, uh, the other day, and w- watching a bit of rugby there. What was your sort of interest in there? Just to go and watch a bit of rugby, or? No, I just had the dog for the day, yeah, so I just thought, get out, take get out. a wee bit of fresh air. It was a nice mm-hmm. day for it, and then mm-hmm. um, watch a wee bit of Six Nations and have a wee pint, so oh, good. it's a good spot down there. Oh, it's great. I, I yeah. love it down there in the winter. It's just uh, one of my favourite places. I drove back last night, actually. It looks yeah. no, pretty, you know, the pitch spot. is pretty, it's yeah. cracking me set up, but the pitch looks pretty yeah. mo- muddy now, isn't it? Well, it is now. I was over mm. there yesterday, and it was like mm. walking through treatment. Ah. But um, it was, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great place and a great bunch of guys. And, and shout out to them, actually, because they've just uh, got to the playoffs in what division they're in? Championship two. two yeah. yeah. So they're in the playoffs now, um, which, uh, and if they get through, they obviously go go up to the, the, the division above. Yeah, promoted so, to Championship 1, yeah. So it should be a big deal for them, I guess. Um, they seem to be a very well-run club. Oh, they're fantastic. Don't they? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You can see it, you know, people, can, you can see it from the outside looking in. Mm-hmm. Big D Smith, D Smith, the manager, you know, I'm sure he's got injuries at the moment, but he's... Uh, He's, he's took those boys. I think they've got more of a management sort of team now than rather than one manager. You need to don't you, in rugby? He's, 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 he's taken them and sort of like the great to watch now. Mm-hmm. Um, saying that, the seconds got beat yesterday 52 14 by Ballymena. So, seen now, but that Ballymena yeah, third, just third, seen yeah. Now. But, um, so well, they won't, and they were, when I left, they were winning. So when Dread. I got back as well, I was like, oh shit. But, um, but sure, but the first team was. They beat Donegadee yesterday, was it? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Very I good. think it all depended on the Lurgan um, uh, academy, academy game. game. Yeah, yeah, that was a title decider, I think, yeah, in uh-huh. the end. And unfortunately, whoever lost that game was likely to finish third and miss out. Yeah, completely. Mm. So I think Lurgan. 
Largan one Lurgan. like in the end, yeah. Which um, it's a sad thing is that I think um, uh, Roundstown beat Lurgan at home mm -hmm. and then lost to them away. So I think that was maybe one of the differences in mm -hmm. sort of getting promoted straight for, into first spotlight, you know. But anyway, but it's a shout out to those. It's a great club. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have the same problems as we do, you know. You listen to some of the boys on their committee. All clubs have the same problems, you know, money. I, it, I, mean, I can't remember what it was now, but they told me what their kit costs through the through the through the club and it's just like you go have they three yeah three amount? three um, ladies but yeah and it's just it's just astronomical the, the amount of money kit costs and what like they, they, have a, they have a brave youth set up mm -hmm. don't they? they have a great youth set up yeah mm. it's a great it's a great club you mm -hmm. know um and i think they're starting to they've had a few sort of didn't zebra train there a few times when they come over to play don't they and uh possibly yeah and sure. i think that, I, that the france under 21s who's there set up to train over there a couple of years ago i went over there to watch it well, i suppose it's handy to you know the airport mm -hmm. and stuff isn't yeah. it yeah so it's um yeah it's a, it's a great setup yeah so you know the same problems as we have you know every club's the same yeah yeah you, know. you always need money mm -hmm. so i know you were sort of saying that they were very wet but how, how are the old um uh Hybrid's eye, well, yeah. it, we put the, the so Les came down this morning. I think Les is sort of we all met on Friday and put the blue covers. Graham mm -hmm. was there, put the and Jonesy was down yourself, mm -hmm. put the blue covers back mm -hmm. on. And uh, Les's idea this year is to get a head start basically and mm -hmm. try and keep a wicket dry. That we're going to the first third home, second game of the season at home to Warringstown. <laughs> so, you know, ideally, I do want to play the friendlies on the the hybrids, but unless oh, we've had a real good two weeks. Mm. I know the dry quicker than the standard yeah. wicket, but yeah, we'll need a good, dro you know, hot, plenty of wind, plenty of sunlight to get the the square dry. You know, it's soft, especially pitch twelve, the new hybrid in pitch twelve. Mm -hmm. Far side of the squares, absolutely. Squelching. Is that where all the water runs uh, over that side? Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's squelching like when you walk on it. Um, mm -hmm. But as, as I said, Les was down. He he's sort of doing a bit of light rolling on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know what? Too the rest of the square is actually not too bad. Mm. It's just because they're so bare, they've yeah, been taking aye. so much down. They're bare, the grass is starting to grow a bit on them, but right. um, the rest of the square is actually quite firm, believe mm -hmm. it or not. How's this with that whole square compared to Gala, like the way it you know, plays? And so, Gala, you get a, a bigger bounce in the ball. It's, it's still fairly slow, but yeah. uh, you, you get a decent bounce and get onto the back foot a wee bit more. Yeah. Um, but no, great spot to play cricket, Marco Moore. Yeah. Uh, right. Brilliant. Front foot though, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely. Mm -hmm. It suits me. Big, big step <laughs> into the ball. <laughs> Happy days. Uh -huh. well, I think yeah. we're all looking forward to people looking forward to playing the hybrids, aren't you? Aye, yeah. well, I well, I need to check us out. Who was it said on Thursday night? Trevor, the chairman, said so all, all leagues means. and cups. You know, it says on it, all leagues and cups. So I, I'm still. I don't think he can play Premier League on them. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's one I need to check out actually with the, the league secretary or whoever. Mm -hmm. Get Tom to check it out, maybe. Hey, James, did you find any pictures of Big G man play, uh, refereeing it? Did, did you put them up? Yeah, yeah. They've been up where are they? Oh, have they? I must have missed them. Must have blinked. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's oh there, there he is. There, look. Who was, who's, who, what team's that, Graymer? Is that, so that the was, Southern team, is it? I think that's maybe 2015 or 2016 that photograph was taken. Right. That's when Watsonians just got promoted back up to the Premiership. Uh -huh. Good Friday night game, that one. Uh -huh. Who's the top side over club side over in Scotland then? So you're looking traditionally, you'd have Melrose, Ayr, Watsonians. Watsonians. But it's kind of all change at the minute in Scottish club rugby. They, they had the Super Six series that ran for a wee while there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I think that's all been disbanded and all those clubs are sort of integrating back in. Right. Causing a wee bit of friction and arguments at the minute, I'm sure. Um, what's that? What's this picture now? What we was officiating there? So we love our sevens in Scotland. So that's a wee tournament down in Hoyk. Uh -huh. um, so I must have refereed the final or something. Uh -huh. And we bought a whiskey by the looks of it. I think Glengoyne oh. used to sponsor us down there. So I think that's probably still in the cabinet somewhere. Actually, so. I don't believe that for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I mean, rugby. If you've got sort of any. Sort of stories you can maybe touch upon about. <laughs> any I know, about you, We're always very about. well behaved on those rugby trips, Steve. Oh, oh I believe it. Yeah, I'm talking uh, about the sort of maybe the on the on the players' sides. You know, sort of any sort of like 
Nothing so, terribly exciting, no, Dave. No, uh, it's a bit of a shite. The trouble yeah. is, you know what it is? The rugby players are more respectful sh- to the thing. referee. That's Sir, a thing. yeah, sorry. No I, argument. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can genuinely count on one hand, Dave, the amount of really bad experiences I've had as a rugby referee. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, you watch the football guys in the yeah. telly. You watch them down at the forum, like getting absolute oh, dogs yeah. abuse. Mm-hmm. But I, I think we're really very lucky. We're welcomed into the clubs to yeah. look after us. Call mm-hmm. you sir. Like, no, no, it's it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, Do you team. know what football needs to take a leaf out of? Well, I, I've always rugby's said though, it's almost like you know, I played rugby for, for a bit of Ricky back in the day, and you get um, you you give it the ref any ref any lip at ten yards, ten yards. It's probably yeah. ten meters now, is it? And then I've always thought they should do that in football in ten minutes. And if it ends up anywhere near the, the, the penalty area, it's a penalty. Yeah. You know, just I've, stop I've always just wondered about the sin bin in football, you know, any dissent. Get them off well, for ten minutes. I, yeah, well, I was listening to someone I forget who it was, they were saying that what would it, what would happen if you if you put someone in a sin bin in football, then just the team defend. would just oh, defend I, or take take ten minutes to take a throw in or t- take you know It was big hands post cogly or a manager actually right, said that that he says like you're going to have 10 minutes of dreadful football. Yeah. Mm. You know? Uh, so yeah. I do like the idea of it, but it's the effects it's going to have yeah. on the actual game mm. itself. It's negative, mm. I think. Yeah. You know, I think that's football's problem. They've done too much mm-hmm. horsing about with it, basically. I don't even like VAR, whatever they call it. Mm. I don't even like again, that. There's, again, rugby use it brilliantly. It's mm. done between the ref and the, the guy doing the TV. Mm-hmm. It's done efficiently, very quickly. The main thing is the supporters sitting in the stadium know what's going on, mm. right? Whereas football, like I've been to, I'm over this week at Spurs. You're sitting there maybe five minutes, going, "What the hell is going on here?" Was it the what's... other day it was a nine minute VI, VAR uh-huh. decision. And nine you know minutes. what? I honestly think that's why the players, again, like I think the amount of injuries in football is ridiculous now. When you look at the pitches, look at the deaths of the players that used yeah. to play years ago, mm-hmm. and now you know they're eating flipping leaves for dinner they're yeah they're absolute machines but they're getting far more injuries now mm-hmm. but i do think the var they're standing there maybe freezing up a bit and then bang hamstrings groins because they're honestly it's ridiculous like mm-hmm. and the game's 100 minutes long now no no maybe more mm-hmm. you know so yeah football, I, you can't I think ro- rugby's definitely <laughs> they, they've got a the tea obviously cricket has the video thing the tea and Tennis is another yeah. one, so football's definitely. But you can't really celebrate a goal anymore, can nah, you? Nah, that's particularly a joint. You kind of go, yeah. You just, just know. Says, hold no. on, they're checking something yeah. here. Hold on. You know, even the player that scores, they, they'll have their celebration and they'll stand. They'll fucking wait and. Ah, it's <coughs> just, yeah. it's the bit about drawing the lines for the offside that gets me. Oh. If, it, if it's not clearly and obviously offside, you can't yeah. see it, then yeah, it's it's a goal or not a goal. Yeah, let the guys in the pitch decide. Yeah, mm-hmm. just lose the entertainment value when you mm-hmm. see your team score and go. Well, we're going to have to wait for mm-hmm. <laughs> three or four minutes here. Honestly, like I see when Spurs used to score, I used to go mental. See now, yeah, you just like hold back a minute. Partly because you know we'll definitely concede. <laughs> 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 Try being a West Ham fan. Oh no! Hey, hey, you, you say, you you say that about football though. Rugby rules are changing all the time. It must be a, a complete nightmare to keep keep up with them all. You know. Concussion's been the big talking point, hasn't it? And yeah. rugby, obviously, past 100%. players and stuff, and, and mm. youth now, and mm. there's a lot of talk around. I listen to talk sport every day yeah. working, but it would be talked about quite a lot, isn't mm. it? G? Yeah, hundred percent. And safety first with those yeah. things. You oh, know, yeah. if anyone's got a head knock or suspected at all, they go off the pitch, and people just accept that. Yeah, and it's oh, the yeah. way it should be, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's mad too because you can't see in a in a in a football match you'll not see a player going over and just banging another player whereas <laughs> the amount of times you see big rugby players actually uh, your man uh, for England Joe Garner is it or what do you call you yeah, Joe Marler Joe Marler yeah so character flip me just an absolute like he's he was in talk he's been in talk sport a few times like he's he is just a but a hard hard man like yeah there was one where uh, your man used to play for England Haskell James yes. Haskell went over and just had him by the throat and big big uh what do you call him again? Joe Marler. Joe yeah, Marler. He sprayed the water over he him. He sprayed the water over <laughs> And yeah. then he, he, your man had him by the throat. And he was just winding him up and winding him up. Mm-hmm. But the amount of times you would see two big men and one of them just... <sighs> do you know what I mean? And uh, I don't... Did they get serious re- repercussions or bans or... 
I think with all the cameras, like anything now, like you're less likely to see that sort of level of ah, violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've seen you know, it. The I, rugby league's another one. Like, it's yeah, just, it is crazy. They just run into brick walls for, yeah. for 80 minutes. That's they're all like, it is. Yeah, they are, but they're, they're, they're a lot fitter than the rugby union boys, aren't they? Like? They're, they're basically just running and tackling all ah, the time. Mm. Yeah. I'm just saying that, I, I mean, it's been a long time. I, when I played rugby, there was no lifting in the line out. So that shows how long ago that was. But um, it's the phases. You know, you, 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 the, the phases years ago didn't go on. It wasn't long before the game broke down and stopped. But now you can be sitting there for like, you know, five, six minutes watching continuous, continuous. And it just must be exhausting. Mm. Just absolutely oh, The exhausting. fitness of those boys. But it must be difficult mm. to ref that kind of thing as well. You must just have to, it's like constant sort of pressure of yeah. watching and... I think as you get older, you learn those sort of shortcuts, Dave. Yeah, Maybe uh -huh. when you're a little bit younger, doing a bit more running. Yeah. But no, you're absolutely right. You've got to try and stay up with play as best you can. Uh -huh. Sort of keep that concentration. Make sure you're understanding what's going on, where the ball is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and pray to God nobody intercepts it and you're running 80 metres that aye, way, you know. Aye. so. <laughs> 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 what did you think of Ireland and the Six Nations? Do you think they're obviously the strongest team in them? Or? I think Ireland are comfortably the best team in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Just, I mean, you've seen that sort of bruising Scotland match. Like, mm -hmm. Scotland just never looked like... It, it was pleasing as a Scotland fan to see them stay in the game as long, but they're just such a machine under yeah. Farrell, I think. He's got them so well drilled, mm -hmm. world-class players in every position. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were a wee bit war unfortunate at the World Cup, probably. Mm -hmm. um, but no serious outfit mm. and I think they will be for the next few years as well I know yeah. it's all peaks and trough I mean look at Wales are in terrible sort of like trouble at the moment you know so yeah. but it's just uh, you know they're going to come good again at some point you know absolutely you never see a Welsh no, team down for too long no. no what about Ulster Rugby and uh, do you know they're your employers um, new manager in is there or is he yeah uh, Richie Murphy I think he coached the under 20s high related highly rated fella uh -huh. um so yeah i think he's just started where's is he from northern ireland is he or i i think he played club rugby down in dublin somewhere he was a he was a number 10 maybe for clontar for terry mm -hmm. Um don't know an awful lot about him but comes highly rated as mm -hmm. as far as i understand mm -hmm. yeah do you get to go to many you go to all the games do you yeah, I actually, um, John McCormack normally uses my <laughs> season tickets, oh, so right. I normally watch he it on does. the telly. He does. Um, so, no, great place to watch rugby. Oh, um, was lucky enough back in the day, actually, to assistant referee a game down there, and, yeah, what a spot it is. Yeah. I've never been there for a I've been uh, there. It's for, cold. It is cold. I've been there it's to cold, do... Especially when you're having a paint. Like, uh, Randstown finals that have got to force the cup or something or other. That yeah. They've gone done the finals there, but I've never been there when there's... A, Again, like uh, in the last ten years, they've done a great job with marketing and yeah. really promoting Ulster rugby. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a machine now. It is a machine. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's a PR machine. It's um, and obviously the I, you know on the pitch, I don't think it's it's been as successful, has it? Or I know obviously you look at the teams, the European Cup teams, the David Humphreys and boys like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, is it transitional at the minute or? How do, how they go on or I, I don't really mm. take an awful big mm -hmm. so I wouldn't actually know I mean they got to the playoffs last year they got beat in the quarterfinals mm -hmm. and I think they're on schedule to get to the playoffs oh. again this year mm -hmm. um, they're in the challenge cup for the, for the European stuff so again it's mm -hmm. probably an opportunity for them then there to mm -hmm. um, for a wee bit of silverware mm -hmm. but no, I think they're going reasonably well mm -hmm. yeah. I see your man McBurney that played at Randallstown that went to Ulster and they went to Edinburgh, I think. Is he over there? I don't no, know. no, he's gone back. He's now just signed for Gloucester, I think. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always been a crossover cricket, rugby, yeah, hockey. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been uh, big Richard Lutton that played cricket for us. Mm -hmm. He's a Bally player now. Yeah. Um, he's a good player. Uh, forward. Yeah. Uh, big Rick. He, he's sort of, he's, his playing days are sort of, he's, he's, he's sort of a replacement every week for Bally Clare. First they've had a good year, haven't they? They actually won the championship one. They'll be going into the sort of the playoffs for the All Ireland League. I think that happens in the next couple of weeks. And then did they win? They won the All Ireland Junior Cup That's as right. well. I've seen that. Aye. Yeah. So Ricky would be um, 
he's still involved and stuff, but he, he you know, he wouldn't get many minutes. Um, <coughs> he had a real bad knee injury as well when I think he when he was playing for uh, Ulster. Mm. Good cricketer too, mm -hmm. really good cricketer, but we haven't seen him. Um, but there's always been there's a guy there, Duke Nathan Duke there at mm. Ulster at the minute. Is he Lisburn? Uh, ah, yeah. Lisburn cricketer, good, really good cricketer too. Um, obviously his dad Neil Duke would have played cricket for Ireland, but also yeah. played Ulster for. Uh, Played rugby for Ulster, mm -hmm. um, and then he ended up a coach at Ulster. I don't know if he's still involved with Ulster, is he? I think he's maybe coaching down Belfast Harlequins now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, there's always been so, that crossover in the two sports. You know, there's been oh, there's countless boys there that have played sort of both disciplines, mm -hmm. and then hockey's obviously Hockey's the other just, one. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So well, it, it, the hockey players have already got it, haven't they? Before they even play cricket, yeah. you know, it's just uh, yeah. And somewhat of the hockey, I watch the hockey on the. Instagram and stuff like that, and some of them, oh, Jesus Christ, what they can do with the hockey ball is ridiculous. That's crazy, you know, and how hard they can hit it, and yeah, you know, fast they move the ball and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something, something else. It is right. So, um, anything else you want to talk about? No, I just sort of, Graham. Like from our point of view, it's been great to have you. Mm -hmm. Um, you've settled in, like you've been there for years. That's why I thought I didn't, I couldn't believe it when you said well, it was like two years. Yeah, yeah. Just, I thought it was like. Three or four uh, years, maybe. Yeah, so it's been great. You know, you've you've settled in, as I say, like you've been there for years. What what's your, sort of been your first impressions of the town, even in the country, and how you find living here? And obviously, it's it's hard leaving your your home place and that where you grew up. But I think Antrim and Gala are pretty similar in many ways. Like coming down to the cricket club at Macamore, it's always apprehensive. It's probably yeah. not the right word, yeah. but you know, new people, mm -hmm. new surroundings. Cricket was always such a big part of my life back home, and just instantly being made to feel welcome was mm -hmm. was brilliant. And loved every minute of being involved at the cricket club. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been great so far. Excellent. Um, but no, yeah, great, love it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. No, it's it's been great. There's oh, some, some of your. So they are there. In the Jonesy's region. compiled a few of the the highlights from last season. So this is obviously at home to CI for the seconds, is it? Oh, he's lost you. I'm about to middle one through first. That is, see, I love that there. That there's proper cricket. Just nudging in for one into the gap. Mm -hmm. They were a good team, those boys. Aye, uh, they have a few few of the first playing there by the looks of it. Oh, oh no. flourishing. Oh, he had a good few 50s last year, Grimmer. So what's your, what's your uh, uh, sort of <coughs> aspirations for the year ahead? What would be your your goals? Do you set yourself goals? Sure. Or be oh, quite laid back with regards to that. Yeah, just go out, try and score a few runs, play as much cricket as I can. Mm -hmm. um, and singing boys own at karaoke. Was it? What was he Ronan singing? Keaton. Oh, Ronan yeah. Keaton. Oh, Ronan Keaton. Ronan nah, Keaton. Nah. Oh, I. I heard all about it. No, do you see? What about his initiation song? That their day, there the day he played against Ballymena. Was it a wee rendition of Flower of Scotland or something? Ah, yeah. ah, my favourite, uh, it's definitely my favourite anthem. Oh, is it? Without a doubt, yeah. And this is Graham. <laughs> Graham came on here, I think I'm right in saying, with about three or four pints in him because, was it you, Jonesy, that got injured? Yeah. Jonesy, done your, was it your fingers? Yeah. So, no better mom is, is cream chinos on and four pints deep to come <laughs> on and straight <laughs> towards me all the time. In, in the rain, you're too. a magnet. Uh, it's always a way, too. When you come on, you're like a magnet. <laughs> You I'm, sh you I'm sure Trevor um, hurt his back looking after the dogs, losing his mind when I'm on the pitch and <laughs> pouring a rain that day as well. So what about the dog? The dog wasn't well. In the... We got a wee road trip. Southampton's lovely, by the way. Um, <laughs> we, been, been. we had to take the wee fella over to uh, Scotland on the boat and then a wee road trip down to Southampton. It's a long That's way. drive. Um, leave him there for two weeks and then do it all over again. But thankfully he's doing really well now. Um, hopefully be back to normal in the next couple of months. So. Nice. What's his name? Chester. Chester. Yeah, he Did he eat beach. something or what happened? It was uh, it was an intrahepatic liver shunt. So basically, the the blood vessel going through the liver is faulty. Right. And for whatever reason, they weren't able to do the the surgery in this part of the world. So. Southampton. Pointed us to a German fella in Southampton who did a fantastic job and yeah, <sighs> got the surgery done. Um, old Chester, we like Old Chester around the club when you put the oh, covers on. Was he a border collie, is he? Or? He's a collie spaniel mix. Ah, so just plenty of energy. energy. All just like, energy. What the fuck? What the fuck? And is, it, what, uh, see, after the operation, is, is the energy sort of 
Sapta or is he back to No, he's back to <laughs> It's uh, brilliant taking him down the club actually. Mm-hmm. Give a couple of the younger lads a tennis ball and you just sit and have a few pints and yeah. oh, knack that's him That's great out. for them down there what too. Sport. Uh, they can just run all day to their heart's content. And remember Juicy at a border, no, Springer Spaniel. Mm-hmm. Juicy used to do the ground and honestly just run all day. Just would run off their ball well, all Mighty Kane's got a springer and it just runs. When Mighty they used they to don't the, stop. You no, wonder how their hearts take it. It's, no, it's <coughs> unbelievable. You just will th- and it'll keep coming back and dropping the tennis ball. Fire it again mm-hmm. and it will not stop all day. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Possible to tire the things out. It is. Possible. It? <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> and how do they sleep at night? Do they, like lights out for hours? Ah, he'll, he'll run around all day and then that'll be him. Sleep ah. for eight hours and then ready to go again for the... You haven't got to take him back to Southampton for a checkup, though, have you? No, no, down to Belfast for oh, the checkup. For so that. fingers crossed that'll be, that'll be so it. I had to do uh, a few a couple of years ago uh, to Ken Ryan down to Bognor Regis, which isn't far from... It's like... It's just How long did it take? A full day, like? It's getting out of Scotland's the worst yeah. bit. So mm-hmm. once you get to Gretna, it's still yeah. probably like six hours from Gretna, yeah. maybe something like that. Yeah. So see Gala, what would be the nearest Scottish town to Gala? So you've got the other border towns. You've got sort of Hoyk, Jedburgh, Peebles, Selkirk, and then Edinburgh would be maybe 30 miles away. It's not too bad. So Dumfries, what? is it? So Dumfries is like sort of southwest, so you're maybe talking an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. So you're actually handy to big cities then? Edinburgh's only flipping 30 minutes. What's the one top right? Aberdeen? Aberdeen's. How how long does that take to get from there? Probably about three hours, something like that. That's a long... Would nearest football team, Queen of the South, would they be the nearest to you? You're probably talking Hibs or Hearts. Ah, of course it would be, aye. The mighty Galafaira Dean Rovers as well, just... What, What are they called? Galafaira Dean Rovers. Well, your me. team, are they? They'd play in the Lowland League. Uh, yeah. Flip me. The mighty. Do you, is that who you follow, is it? Just sort of... Yeah, well, yeah, to keep an eye on the results. Yeah, like, uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. And the Lowland League, sort of perennially mid-table and get the odds <laughs> run at the second round of the Scottish Cup. Was your school, Graham, was it predominantly rugby? And the borders, all rugby. Ru- your two options are rugby or rugby down there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's, so cricket, how did Gala do it then with regards to getting kids? You know, the the same coaches in the schools or how, how do they get their kids? Or? I, I think the rugby club have, have always had a development officer. Mm-hmm. So part of their, their remit would be going into schools. Mm-hmm. Um, they'd have age grade teams all the way up. Is that, you're talking about rugby? Rugby, yeah. yeah. We did, uh, how what, do, what about the cricket? What about the, the cricket? If the schools aren't playing cricket, how do clubs like Gala get get the kids involved and get them to start taking up cricket? It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I know for one, when I was at school, we we played the odd game, maybe of quick cricket or yeah. whatever in oh, PE, yeah. but it was never really an option. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. Just try and get them at a young age, yeah. you know, through All Stars or whatever it is. And like much like Muckamore, a lot of the guys that are up there, it's a family connection. Yeah, exactly, you bring exactly. your mates up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, is it is Gala? Is it a town? Is it is there a town called Gala? Gala Shields. Gala yeah. Shields. Yeah. And is it big? What will be? It's probably about the same size as Antrim. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Antrim's what? What's this? 30, 35, 38,000? 38, 38, right? So Gala maybe be half that, maybe 15,000. Uh, Antrim's okay. just getting bigger and bigger. Well, you live in one of the new developments. Like There must be seven, eight new developments. At least. And it's a commuter town, obviously. You're handy to everywhere. Are you based at home, Graham? Or are you so I, I'd work more from the office than I would from home. Mm. But again, half an hour in the morning, if you miss rush hour, it's brilliant. Are you at the Kingspan, is it? Aye. Yeah, based at the stadium. Aye. Yeah, very, very good. good. Some mean. office, I bet you. It's a good, good spot, and we're we're bang in the middle of cup final season at the minute. So a lot yeah. of the job is, you know, working at the games of rugby. Right, someone uh-huh. that loves their rugby, like mm-hmm. what a job! Ah, yeah. that was perfect. Is that me? Very good. Yeah, very good. Mm-hmm. I think that's just about. So you got anything to add? No. Nope. Just wraps it. How about you, Jonesy? Anything? Nope, not for me. Do you want to talk about your team for the coming season or anything? I talked about that last week. Uh, hey, as Davy Allen's coming back to play, I spoke to him. Yeah, that was just on that actually. Then, yeah, we, there is going to be a bit of a recruitment drive. We we'll have it every year anyway. Yeah. It's no different. Um, you know, we we might be, you know, a massive 
club with mm -hmm. regards numbers and stuff, but we're always looking extra numbers and more numbers, and you always get the few that will drop away. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we have lost two players this week. Big uh, Barrett, heartbroken. Yeah, we're all heartbroken, Barrett and Ravi, two yep. great guys. Um, you know, we loved having you, and we hope you'll not be strangers, but, um, you know, we will miss you, and it's two people we'll have to replace, mm -hmm. you know. So um, this is a shout-out to anyone that hasn't played in a few years it used to play at Muckamore used to play at other clubs that's mm -hmm. living near or wants to come and play at Muckamore mm -hmm. by all means come down you've heard from Graham here Graham's come in there you know end the 2022 season and it's you know he's just fitted in brilliantly we're a welcoming mm -hmm. club aren't we Graham you can vouch for that 100% mm -hmm. you know so um doesn't matter what standard you at doesn't matter if you haven't played cricket before and yeah. you want to start playing it um honestly come down to Muckamore you'll you'll love it mm -hmm. uh, it's a great place to play and as i say we're all very welcome and doesn't matter what level of cricket you're at doesn't matter if you haven't played doesn't matter if you're male female doesn't matter what walk of life you're from yeah come down you know we're always looking numbers um, mm -hmm. and be part of a a big sports club in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. yeah. well as i always said we, our club needs more regular cricketers than premier league cricketers mm -hmm. you only need 11 of those we need 55 of the others mm -hmm. so um you know it doesn't matter what standard you are um, just come down and give it a go. Yeah. And join. And if you don't want to play cricket, come and join as an associate member and just sit and enjoy watching the cricket. And it's the, as we always say, it's the best uh, beer garden. Oh, well, there's uh, yep. Graham again. You can vouch for that. When the sun's shining, when the sun's no, shining. No, no, I shouldn't. You know, <laughs> That's the big thing. That, it, it is a great spot. You know, mm -hmm. we all sit down there and we'll have a bit of crack. And, mm -hmm. you know, it comes to a certain stage when the when the light goes down and Graham sends a dog home that we get the, the, the Bluetooth speaker on him. Yeah. We we'll dance away and have we've had some great nights in there, you know. It's mm -hmm. I've, I've had the best nights of my life in that week, yeah. you know. It's just a great wee spot, um, and more to come. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously, just the sponsors, the, the, you know, thank you so much to every company or person, <coughs> yep, that has bought a sponsor board so far. Yep. And we're still, you know, actively seeking. So, mm -hmm. um, if you're watching this and you want to support the club, um, it'd be really appreciated. We are going to have a sponsors day at the club um it's probably going to be a first 11 home match mm -hmm. well it will be um and it'll be a bit like the rugby works with the with the have a sponsors lunch um mm -hmm. uh and then obviously they can they can see what the club's about and, and watch a bit of cricket and enjoy a wee day at the club prawn, you know prawn mayonnaise sandwiches don't know about that yeah. but um <laughs> ham and cheese and a bit of tuna I'll do right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but no thank thanks very Maybe much to week, all the sponsors we're also looking this podcast sponsored uh <laughs> We Jonesy has just ordered another camera, so we're going to have two cameras on a on a match day. Mm -hmm. So whether that be the blue bells or the the six or the under fifteens playing on the main pitch, whoever it is, there's going to be two cameras, one at either end. So after the over, it switches automatically. Yeah. So we're looking at NV Play uh, sponsor, and we're looking. What was the other thing? So podcast NV Play and club house. Yeah, our like ground. The, yeah, ground. Aye, just look, yeah. look, put it like this: if you're interested in sponsoring a club, get in touch with me, mm -hmm. Dave, the Facebook page. There's loads of opportunities. There is so many opportunities, and, and for, for all budgets as well. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for thousands and thousands and thousands. I think what we're doing for a match, match so match, day, match. So first eleven home matches is probably going to be 150, and that's yeah. that's for match ball and uh, the the match itself. We're just rolling the end of one. Yeah. So you come down, we'll look after you for the day. Yeah, you'll get you know. Uh, we media, lunch. Yeah, for yeah. media co coverage uh -huh. uh, you'll be in the paper you'll be on the Facebook page and Instagram and Twitter and mm -hmm. we'll be uh, you know singing your praises so um, you know so anything from 150 pound upwards yeah you know so we're looking for all for all budgets basically that's it yeah mm -hmm. so so thank you to um, everyone no I think Jonesy you'll put the um, you put the new the ones that I mentioned today on the the, the description yeah they'll be in the description and please and we said this last time and it happened please if like what you've watched today just press that like button and subscribe subscribe that's the that's the yeah. real key one subscribe we, we need to get to i think we've got about how many we got 280 Jones? 280 we need a thousand mm -hmm. minimum mm -hmm. um but um like and subscribe please and leave a note as well yeah just leave a note underneath and sort of get a bit of dialogue and started. any feedback yes. so mm -hmm. if you're sick of seeing Neil. me <laughs> talking absolute crap um 
mm-hmm. if you're sick of seeing me or whatever you want mm-hmm. you, you, there's any suggestions of how we can improve this yeah. there's going to be subtle improvements um obviously along the way we're only learning ourselves but uh, i think it's only our fifth or sixth isn't it so and if you um, want to come on if and if you want to come, come on, on yeah. definitely you know mm-hmm. we're we're looking people every week so come on and have a bit of crack it's not mm-hmm going to be serious it's going to be a laid back yeah. and a bit of banter a bit of crack and mm-hmm. do, do you know it's just good for people to be able to sw- i know sam gordon always i always like the shout out we sam he's now in bali so he is and then i think they're going to bangkok they're going around south they say Banga, then. <laughs> 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 so he uh he says get the next podcast on i love watching it but i'm yeah. away you know so you don't know where people are watching from no I you know, know. so well, we have some crazy places we mm. people were watching our mm-hmm. game where was it Jonesy, sort of Nepal and was it Mor- was it Morocco? And yeah, there's a pile of countries at one stage watching. Yeah, Jesus, you know you know YouTube thing. Yeah, it's crazy. So yes, we'll put the description. The, the, our sponsors we mentioned tonight, we'll put in the description. Like what you've watched, make a little comment if you want to, and um, subscribe. The most important thing. Graham, thank you very much for coming along. Cheers, Not Graham. a problem. Enjoy very, myself. Uh, it's been great. You'll come back. Come back and sit again with us. Is, Get uh, that calf right for the season, yeah. big man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Get in there. Three or four weeks, boy. <laughs> yeah, big, big things from you this year. The That's twos, are, the twos are on the uh, on the rise this year. Mm-hmm. Keeps you going to get them going like crazy. Um, win a few games, challenge trophies. You know. That's so, it. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. Right? Yep. Yep. So listen, thanks very much for coming. I know I asked you today. Ben Callitz was supposed to come on today, but he's had a. He enjoyed himself at the hockey and he said, Could I come another day? So, you know. The youth of today, David. Oh, no. uh, Bloody hockey. Uh, not very reliable, are they? No, these, no. these youngsters, no. but we'll get them on. We'll get we'll the big get red rocket on again. I know. Um, and the thing is, we had it all set, didn't we, Jones? He had his drop catch at the beginning of his last season all ready oh. to go on the end. Yeah, he probably sort of... walked out, though. That's the problem. <laughs> he had a walked out. He was absolutely fuming with the doctor when he put that on the highlight package. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. No, it, nothing like twisting the knife, is it? I tell you what, he and Jonesy is the master at things like that. That's the only problem with having Jonesy doing this sort of thing. You need to watch him like a hawk. Because you could sit down to watch this for the first time and God only knows. Mm-hmm. So you need to be in your best behaviour at all times or the doctor captures, captures it mm-hmm. and throws it in there. Mm-hmm. Um... He's just one to watch. I know. And he always puts it, if you notice on the MV play replays, even if he, it's a good shot from him, but it hasn't gone for four, it somehow makes the replay. Okay. <laughs> Have you seen that? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, here he's got a big chance this year. Keeping for the threes, boy, and junior two. The two. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I think that's why he's wanting the ball machine out. He's wanting to fu- put the work in. 100%. Yeah. So I like to hear the doctor. And here, good friend here is a very good keeper as well. He might just... Uh, He's, he's now back at the club. Mm-hmm. So he might just uh, put a wee R to him yeah, during the week. I just want to keep it. I was with Anna Kane today, and she's... Um, Cliff Wilson told me that Anna Kane, I was speaking to him at the club, batting. was absolutely outstanding Super, batting today. Super. Um, and I went through... Straight bat. Yep, and then I went through... That's the NCU. He's been at NCU. Yep. So thanks to the guys there putting a bit of effort into those... For those, brilliant. ...those bluebells. And um, I did some keeping drills with her. And she looks outstanding. It's so. hard for a hockey player, isn't it? Because oh, your natural God. thing is there. It's not there. Well, don't it's, does she play? Yes, yeah, she does play. Yeah. Hockey, yeah. So um, obviously it is the work mm-hmm. that the, you know, it's, it's brilliant. That's what uh, Cliff says. She smacked one straight yeah. as a day, boy. No, looked really, really good today. They, they, so. they, they all looked, the ones that have been mm-hmm. to the NCU, uh, Ellie Naylor looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had the crash mat out the day doing diving catches. Brilliant. So that was always good crack. Yeah, but it's always a bit difficult for the girls, like diving, mm. for obvious reasons. So, mm. um, so it's just giving them a wee bit of confidence to, to maybe do a bit of diving out on the on the grass when the, when the season comes. But you know, small steps. That's it. Yeah. So listen, thanks, mate, boys. It's been great. Thanks, yeah. Graham, again. Thanks, Jonesy. I think that's us done, isn't it? Cheers, folks. Cheers, folks. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Jonesy.